All right, guys, welcome back to lesson 15. We continue to plow through this, the Word of God. And yes, we're jumping in on week three. Praise the Lord. We've got a new change of clothes. We've showered, we've bathed, and our crew is here, but we've added a new guy. We got rid of one and brought in another. Aaron, glad you're here today. It's good to be here. All right, so here's the deal. We have been plowing through literally 29 chapters in the book of Genesis. And the theme is what we have been using all this whole time. It it, it comes from one word. Uh, Our one word is seed. The seed of the woman is coming through Abraham. It's going into Isaac. And then obviously it's coming into Jacob. God uses Jacob through two wives to actually point to the seed of the woman. And so that, that's where we want to go today. And, you know, there's this commentator, Sailhammer. It's not my commentator back here, Wearsby, but Sailhammer, he says this, and I love this reference. He says, Jacob, he wanted to take Rachel as a wife, but God intended him to have Leah. Jacob sought to marry Rachel, but Laban tricked him. And then Jacob sought to build a family through Rachel. But the problem was, is that she was barren but God opened up her womb. Every time Jacob tried something, it was like, God, nope, said, I have, a, I have another plan. I have a, another way that I'm going to unfold how I want to pursue the seed. And so what we're going to look at today is something I'm super excited about. I'm going to go over here to this map. I'm going to unfold what we would call the 12 tribes of Israel and how they came through Jacob and a whole lot of women. And I got to tell you, <laughs> it's super confusing. Like, it's not confusing. It's just confusing how God would use chaos to bring control. He would use imperfect people to bring a perfect plan to fruition. And that's exactly what happened. So if you would, join me in Genesis 29, specifically verse 31. So when the Lord saw, watch this, that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb. But Rachel was unable to conceive. And Leah conceived, gave birth to a son, and named him Reuben. So, all right, we're going to start talking about the wives. And then under the wives, who are their kids? So first of all, under Leah, you have Reuben. Reuben does something ridiculous. Reuben actually gives it, and we're going to get into that a couple days, but in Genesis 35, 22, I'll just cut to the chase. You know what he does? Does anybody know what Reuben does? Does anybody remember? Sleeps with Bella. He sleeps with his father's concubine. He brought disgrace. Reuben brought disgrace, and we're going to get into this crazy story, to his father Jacob because he's implying, I want the authority, I want the inheritance. He's implying so much. And so Reuben, what happened was is that he was not blessed in Genesis 49. In Genesis 49, it actually just says, I'm I'm taking away some of these things. And so here you have Reuben, the first son of, of Jacob. So here's what happens in verse 33 of Genesis 29. She conceived again. And she gives birth to a son, and she said, The Lord has heard that I'm unloved and has given me this son also. So Leah, she has another son. His name is Simeon. Jacob, again, doesn't really care. But to come on over here, uh, over to our map here, you see, first of all, Reuben, right? See, look, I've got a son. And now, oh, praise the Lord. The Lord is hearing, like, I have a son. Leah has a son. Two sons. But Simeon, he's a troublemaker, too. Because years later, he hears about his sister Dinah in Genesis 34, 24 through 31. And what happens is, is that uh, after Dinah gets raped by a man named uh, Shechem, okay? Simeon killed Shechem and all of the men because of what they did to Dinah. Now, I have to tell you, like, if something happened to my sister, Janae, I'd be pretty hot. I'd be pretty mad too. But, man, Simeon went so far, he, he killed every male. And then that brought on destruction. That brought on uh, um, something that the Lord did not want. And so Simeon, unfortunately, he didn't get a good a good rap. And so if you go back to the board here, guys, you have Reuben and you have Simeon. Well, if you'll see in verse 34 of Genesis 29, she conceived again, the seed and the seed bearer. They give birth to a son, and at last my husband will become attached to me because I've borne him three sons. Remember, Psalm 127 says that, uh, verse 1, children are a heritage from the Lord. And so this heritage is actually happening. And so what do you know? Leah then gives birth to a third son, which the reality is, Kevin, do you guys remember, if you'll go back to Genesis 34, verse 24, Levi is, is not the greatest, you guys. Levi is still doing, uh, remember what he did with Simeon. Simeon and Levi, they both went and actually killed all of the men. Now, here's the craziest of them all. Leah, who was not supposed to be like connected with Jacob, has a fourth child. And in Genesis 29, 
verse, 30, uh, verse 35. It says she conceived again. And I, I, I'm trying to give you this visual here again. Seed and seed bearer, because we're after the seed of the woman. It says she conceived again. She gave birth to a son and said, this time I'll praise the Lord. And therefore, it says, I love this, she named him Judah, and then Leah stopped having children. So we have our fourth one, all right? His name is Judah. Eventually, Judah, right here through Leah, the fourth son, eventually is going to bring about blessing and reconciliation to the world. Judah, right here, you guys, I'm telling you, it's the craziest thing, becomes the seed. And that wasn't Jacob's plan. Go all the way to the end. Because remember, our whole purpose of the painting, our whole purpose of the 66 books is that Jesus is the complete portrait of the Messiah. Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament and the New Testament together. And if you would, go to Revelation 5.5. 5, and what you see in Revelation 5.5, 5, to me, it's unbelievable. It says, then one of the elders said to me, stop crying. <laughs> I just, like, if you didn't know the context of anything else, just stop crying. You know, like, look, the lion from the tribe of Judah, the root of David. You guys, this comes from Leah and her fourth son. The lion from the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has been victorious so that he may open the scroll and its seven seals. Judah is the seed. Like, you don't have to do any more studying for the rest of the two years. You got your answer. Judah will lead to Jesus Christ. And that is the craziest thing to me because it was not Jacob's plan. He wanted Rachel. God said, no, I'm going to give you Leah, who nobody wanted. And I'm going to give you Leah, and she's going to try four times. And in this process, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and then Judah. So I'm going to go back over to the, the map. Eventually, what you'll see is, is that Judah, in Numbers 34, and you'll see in Joshua 1 how the land is allocated. We can get to Genesis 30 now. That's where you're reading is. You're like, Kyle, we covered this last time. We covered this whole gen. I, I know, I get this, but you got to understand where we're headed here. So, all right, let's go to the next one. Now, when Rachel saw in verse 1 that she was not bearing Jacob any children, she envied her sister. Jealousy is not good. And so she says, give me sons or I will die, she said to Jacob. Now, I love this because if I was Jacob, I'd be like, uh, I can't really help you there. I, I'm not in control of that. So don't die, but I can't help you. Where was Rachel's focus, you guys, according to verse 1? Her focus was is that her sister was producing children, not her. She wasn't fearing the Lord. She was jealous of, of somebody else. And this is interesting to me. Kevin, can you go to Titus 3? verse 3 and 4, Titus verse uh, chapter 3, verse 3 and 4. And it just talks about, for we too were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, enslaved by various passions and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, detesting one another. But in verse 4, but when the goodness and love for man appeared from God our Savior, you can just keep it there. The point is, is that when, when Christ is in our lives, envy and jealousy goes away. The problem is, is that Leah and Rachel, their eyes were constantly on each other, constantly about like moving the, the chess piece. How can I get ahead of my husband, Jacob? How can I get ahead of my sister? And so the envy will lead to destruction. And so in verse two of Genesis 30, Jacob became angry with Rachel and said, am I in God's place who's withheld children from you? In other words, I can't, I can't pull a God card and say, oh, great, you want kids? Here I go, I can do this. And then it works. work. So in verse three, then she said, here's my slave, Billa. Okay, so now all of a sudden you have, oh boy, guys, I'm going to run out of room. Uh, Rachel says, well, fine, you have Billa. Now, a tradition would have been, again, uh, you're going to give up your slave, your servant, to your husband if uh, she can't produce. So she says, here is my slave, Billa. Go sleep with her, and she'll bear children for me so that through her I, too, can build a family. I think this is the weirdest conversation, you guys. She just, she just says, oh yeah, go sleep with my, my maidservant. Rachel says, go sleep with her. In other words, go have sex with her. Go have relations so that somebody will have the seed in the seed bearer action. Anybody know what you call this? Trouble. Trouble. <laughs> yeah, absolutely it's trouble. So Rachel in verse four, polygamy, man. It's weird. Polygamy is weird. So Rachel gave her slave Billa to Jacob as a wife and he slept with her. Dear Lord, can you imagine the confusion of this? 
In verse 5, Bila conceived again, seed, seed bearer, and bore Jacob a son. Because for what Rachel knew right now, she's after creating the seed. She's after building this family. And I promise you guys, they knew about the promises through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I, I know this. They know this. And so it continues on in verse 6. Rachel said, God has vindicated me, yet he has heard me and given me a son. And this son's name is Dan. So here you have Dan. Dan didn't get a whole lot of land according to Numbers 34 and Joshua 1, but here you have this little part here, Dan. Dan's not listed in the book of Revelation in Revelation 7, even though they were given land to settle in the promised land. Uh, There's one famous guy from Dan. Anybody have any idea who was a Danite? You guys have any clue? He was the strongest man in the Old Testament. Samson. Samson. Samson comes from this lineage. Samson was... A Danite from Judges 13 to 24 and 25. So here you have four sons from Leah, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. So, all right, let's keep going here. Wow. That's five sons. We got seven more to go. You're like, oh, I got to go to a bathroom. Fine, go to the bathroom, hit pause, come back, okay? But point is, is we're not going to. We're going to keep going. In Genesis 30, verse 7, Rachel's slave Billah, she conceived again, seed, seed bear, and she bore Jacob a second son. So Rachel is not doing the action here. It's Billa. Okay, so in verse 8, if you would continue on, Rachel said, In my wrestlings with God, I have wrestled with my sister and won. (laughs) She's not wrestling with Leah, but in her mind, she's like, yes, I'm going to win. And then she named, here you go, under Billa, Naphtali. Here's my favorite about Naphtali. This one I don't know if you've ever read the New Testament and you just read locations and you're like, oh yeah, that was great, you know, hey, whatever. But this one floored me. Kevin, if you would go to Matthew, 5, Matthew 4, Matthew 4, verse 13. This is where Jesus started his ministry, you guys. Is that, watch this, okay? I'm gonna go over here to the map right here. Okay, this is the Sea of Galilee, this little land, right? This little plot of sea right here. Naphtali is right around here, which would make sense that Jesus is going to do his ministry. And it says he left Nazareth behind He went to live in Capernaum by the sea in the region of Zebulon and Naphtali. Keep going, Kevin, in verse 14 of Matthew 4. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. So in Isaiah 9, okay, Isaiah 9, verse 1, it says this, and it's pretty awesome. Nevertheless, the gloom of the distressed land will not be like that of the former times, when he humbled the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will bring honor to the way of the sea to the land east of the Jordan, and to the Galilee of the nations. And then in verse 2, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. This is in the land of Naphtali. A light has dawned on those living in the land of darkness. Jesus' ministry started in Naphtali, but Naphtali's mom was Billa, which was Rachel's slave. I'm telling you, it doesn't get any more messed up than this. All right, now in verse 9, uh, back to Genesis 30. When Leah saw that she had stopped having children, she took her slave, Zilpah, and gave her to Jacob as wife. So all of a sudden, whoa, hey guys, um, it's, it's game time. All right, Rachel, you want to use your wife or your, your slave? Here's my slave. So she gave her slave, Zilpah, and gave it to Jacob. And then in verse 10, here we go again. Leah's slave, Zilpah, it doesn't say this, but she conceived seed and seed bearer, bore Jacob a son. And the scripture says in verse 11, then Leah said, what good fortune. And she named him. Gad. Let's go back to the map here. Again, so here's our seventh son. We've talked a lot about Simeon and Reuben and Judah and Dan, and then you've gone to Naphtali, uh, Gad, and now now we're uh, we're talking about uh, Gad. Where look how much land he's eventually going to be given. I think it's really interesting. Now the famous, most famous Gad, okay, is First King seventeen, verse one. I love this. Is that all of these guys? Look at Elijah the Tishbite from the Gilead settler said Ahab. Right there, the Tishbite from the Gilead that implies he is from Gad. So Elijah. So you got Samson from Dad, Dad, Dan, Dad. (laughs) Samson from Dan, and now all of a sudden you have Elijah from Gad. So God is using this lineage to speak to us. And so even though it's a mess, God still uses all of these people to speak to our lives to eventually point to the Messiah. All right, there's a whole lot more there, but we're going to keep going because of time. In verse 12, it says this of Genesis 30. When Leah's slave, Zilpah, bore Jacob a second son, Leah said, 
I'm happy that the women call me happy. So she named him Asher. The motivations, you guys, behind these women are just off. Everything about this seems off. And yet, crazy enough, God continues to use these people. Asher, the tribe of Asher, having a hard time uh, actually finding a hero or a judge from this period. I do know this, that there's one that if you would go to Luke 2, verse 36, this is the one that I found. This is the one I'm like, okay, maybe there is somebody that came from Asher. Luke 2, verse 36, it's a prophetess, and her name is Anna. Anna, a daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. And I I love this. So even when you're looking, God's going to use somebody, you guys. Even if you feel like, oh, nobody likes us, God can use you right where you're at. All right, this is a lot. We've got eight, and we're moving along here. All right, in verse 14, this is where it gets what I would call weird. (laughs) Like it hasn't already gotten weird. So Reuben, the first son of Leah, went out during the wheat harvest and found some mandrakes in the field. When he brought them to his mother, Leah, when he brought them to his mother, Leah, Rachel asked, please give me some of your son's mandrakes. Now, mandrakes, just so you guys know, uh, this fruit, it brings a strong, pleasant fragrance. This fragrance, this is the mentality that will help barren women conceive, aka it's a sex fruit. That's what people think. That's what they're hoping for. If I take this, this will help me bring about more kids. If you go back to the board, Rachel is, has no children. She will do anything she can. So she turns to the mandrakes, not to the Lord. Again, here you have this heritage of people not turning to the Lord. They're turning to the superstitions. They're to, turning to these things of like, hey, what's my horoscope? I mean, that, that's what we're doing right here. And in verse 15 of Genesis 30, Leah replied to her, well, isn't it enough that you've taken my husband? Now you also want to take my son's mandrakes? Well, Rachel said, you can sleep with Jacob tonight in exchange for your son's mandrakes. Where does Jacob fit into all of this? All of a sudden, Jacob is the prostitute for his own wives. Like, it's getting weird. Sure, I'll trade you some fruit for my husband. All right, so now in verse 16. (laughs) Jacob came in from the field that night. Leah went out to meet him and she said, You must come with me, for I've hired you with my son's mandrakes. Really? (laughs) So what does Jacob do? He slept with her. I mean... (laughs) That's what I'm putting my hope in. Praise the Lord. Christ is perfect and these guys are not. Man, they're all about themselves. It all came, in fact, one guy, uh, this is true, Rich. This commentator's name is Fockelman, okay? Say say that again. Fockelman. Fockelman said everything came down to like service wages. Everything. When it comes down to the seed with Leah, Zilpah, Rachel, and Billa, it's all about service wages. Remember Laban? Oh yeah, sure. You want, a, you want my daughter? Work for me for seven years. Oh yeah, you want, my, you want your husband? Here's mandrakes. And, and so it's like this constant work mentality. And there is this struggle. Leah, as Walkie says, is struggling for love and recognition from her husband. And Rachel's just struggling to have kids. And so this struggle is driving them to a whole different level. And yet... Amidst all of this, 12 tribes are going to be made that are going to point to Christ. Scripture continues on in verse 17. God listened to Leah. You guys, that night that she, uh, she gave up the mandrakes, that she slept with Jacob, God listened to Leah. God, God honored <laughs> Leah, and she conceived seed, seed bear, and bore Jacob a fifth son, because we have four right now, and she named him Issachar. Now, Issachar, to me, uh, first of all, Issachar just means hired. (laughs) It also means he rewards. Like, God has rewarded me, or he was hired. This was a result of a hiring. And so, years later, Issachar, okay, I will tell you this. They're described as fighting men in numbers. But where I want to go today, Kevin, is is go to 1 Chronicles 12, 32. It says this, uh, from the Issacharites who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. The sons of Issachar were men who watched. They were watchmen. They were the ones who understood the times. They were the ones who the Lord would prophetically allow them to see something. And then their role was to release these words into other people. Everybody in these 12 tribes, they all play a different role. But the son of Issachar came because of Leah and Jacob and somebody got mandrakes and Rachel still didn't have kids. Poor Rachel. All right, there's a lot here. Uh, Let's go to verse 21. All right, verse 21. We are moving along. Leah later bore a daughter and named her 
Dinah. Now, later, probably is in... Re yes, Kevin. You skipped the sixth. Oh, Kevin, thanks. Go to verse 19. After Issachar, then all of a sudden Jacob bore a sixth son. Thanks, Kevin. Verse 20. Uh, verse 20, God has given me a gift. God has given me a good gift. Leah said, this time my husband will honor me because I have borne him six sons. And she named him Zebulon. All right. So, <laughs> Zebulon means... God has presented me, or God has honored me, or God has acknowledged me that I, uh, like, God just recognizes, hey, by the way, he's given me a gift. So, Kevin, go to Matthew 4, uh, Matthew 4, verse 13, because remember this. Remember Jesus' ministry? Remember it started in Naphtali and Zebulon. He left Nazareth behind and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, Jesus, in the region of Zebulon and Naphtali. And so the sixth son of Leah which came as a result, I believe, an open womb because of Rachel buying mandrakes, Jesus is going to do ministry in that area. Now, Rich and I, we've been to Israel, and I'm excited to take more people, uh, Lord willing, even this year. My, my favorite place in all of Israel is the Sea of Galilee, which is Zebulon and Naphtali. Rich, would you agree that that's probably one of your sweet spots there? That's a beautiful place. And so because of six sons, again, it points to where the Messiah, which Isaiah 9, the prophet talks about, the prophet, it, it, that the Messiah is going to do ministry. He's going to bring light into darkness. And so Zebulon is that sixth son. Kevin, did I miss any more? Am I good? Okay, thanks, man. That's, that's good. All right, verse 21. Later, Leah bore a daughter and named her Dinah. Later, it was probably in reference to after the 14 years. Okay, so think about these kids having, being born in the time period that, that Jacob was working for Laban, seven and seven. Okay, does that make sense? So in these 14 years, uh, they're having kids, but Leah uh, gives a daughter, her, uh, and her name is Dinah. I don't even want to write Dinah on here because I feel like it's cheating. We'll write her really little. And the reason is just because of she's not classified as a 12th tribe. You're not going to see Dinah uh, on this map here, not because of anything except the Lord has 12 tribes through the men. All right. Uh, we do know, remember, in Genesis 34, unfortunately, she ends up getting raped. And then because of Simeon and Levi, do you remember this? Then they went, because of Dinah, they then went and fought the Shechem, uh, Shechemites, killed all the males. And then it came from poor Dinah having to go through um, being sexually abused. So it's pretty real. All right, guys, we are almost done here. So let's do a quick recount, shall we? Reuben, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Rich, if there's 12 tribes, we've got two more to go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thanks, Rich. Do you want me to say the names or no? No, that's okay. <laughs> All right, verse 22. Then God remembered Rachel. I mean, when you look at the seed, you guys, when you, when you look at this, the obvious, the obvious statement is Rachel is barren still. And he listened to her and he opened her womb. Verse 23, she conceived and bore a son and said, God has taken away my shame. Verse 24, she named him Joseph. May the Lord add another son to me, which I think is a really weird phrase. She names him Joseph and her first phrase is, God, give me another one. It's not, oh, praise the Lord, I finally got my son. We've gone through Leah, Zilpah, and Billa. She's not like, thank you, Lord, for listening to my prayer. She's like, Lord, give me another one. I'm not satisfied. And that's constantly the mentality of Rachel. But I will tell you, Joseph, it means increase. Okay, there's a lot of definitions here. It means increase. May he add. And then in this, that's the whole mentality, is that she simply wants more. Now, we know that we're going to get into this. I'm looking down here at my notes because there's so much here with Joseph. I mean, you guys... Uh, Kevin, if you would, go to Genesis 41. Go to 41, verse 38. I mean, we're going to describe Joseph just a little bit here. Uh, can we find anybody like this? A man who has the Spirit of God in him. Joseph is classified as like an unbelievable description. Verse 39 says, And so, so Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has made all this known to you, there's no one as intelligent, as wise as you. Joseph was a stud. Uh, he's strong. Scripture says he's well-built says he's handsome, all of these different things. God was, in fact, Kevin, Acts 7, verse 9. 
So even though Rachel waited a really, really long time, it was worth it. The patriarchs became jealous of Joseph and sold him into Egypt. Why? Because God was with him. Even though Rachel acted, it feels like in sin many times, the scripture says God was with Joseph. And years later, we know uh, God used Joseph. God used Joseph to spare an entire family, an entire country. But eventually, if you'll notice, I want to point out something really obvious here. Uh, Does anybody see Joseph on the map? You're not going to see Joseph on the map. And, And interesting enough, this is really important. Why? Because his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, are blessed from Jacob. Jacob actually blesses Ephraim and Manasseh as if he was a, they were a part of the 12 tribes. So Joseph receives a double blessing, and it comes through his sons Ephraim and Manasseh. Again, so much to go through, but that is our number 11. Now, when we call it 12 tribes, when you come to the end of Genesis, uh, Genesis 30, you'll notice that we're missing a 12th. It's not here right now, so I just want to add real quick here, just so we're all on the same page, uh, Benjamin is the 12th son. We'll get into this down the road, but I I do just want to make sure everybody understands. Benjamin, Benjamin, okay, means son of my right hand. Okay, eventually, uh, Rachel dies while giving birth to Benjamin. Do Do you guys remember when she says, you know, give me a son or I'm going to die? Well, it happened. She ends up dying while giving birth to Benjamin. We know that God's going to shield him. We know that God's going to bless him. We know that God is, uh, has a really interesting plan. And strangely enough, they're also described as these ravenous as wolves. And so Benjamin has this weird identity complex that all I'll tell you, though, is, and this is why I say this, and this is how I'm going to close all this out. This is the longest lesson we've ever done out of 14 other lessons. And I really believe it's because I want you to understand these 12 tribes establish everything for the Messiah, everything. And my favorite person that comes out of any of these, okay, aside from Jesus, it comes from Judah, is does anybody know who comes from the tribe of Benjamin? David. Nope. Go to Philippians 3, if you would, please. Philippians 3, verse 5. Tom, you want to say it, I can tell. Uh, Circumcised, this is the Apostle Paul. Circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin a Hebrew born of Hebrews regarding the law of Pharisee. I I think why I get emotional about this is that God used four women that were a disaster. Basically, all they were doing was jockeying and positioning for a place with their husband. And the reality is is that all they needed to do was, was to talk to the Lord. Everything on their focus was the wrong focus. And God used even the wrong focus to keep pointing to the seed of Christ. And so here you have the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Judah that points to... um, Jesus. (laughs) Jesus. <laughs> and yet, who points him to Jesus? The tribe of Benjamin. Because Saul, who's a crazy, ravenous wolf, became a man that pointed them to Christ. Thanks for hanging in there with us on Lesson 15. There's a lot here, and I'd encourage you to really dig in more. Uh, dig in with the reading guides, you guys. Don't, don't take advantage. Don't, don't overlook the reading guides. Please dig into uh, even the, the little short daily reading about just some different scripture verses, or, or maybe even look through the teaching notes. Uh, My point is, is we want you to go deeper. And this section here, it causes you to go deeper. All right, bless y'all. Have a great day.